as a, as a guy who just wants to go in the toy house and look for something that you like, you're not really going to understand, hey man, how come I see it on the back of the box, but I never see it on the shelf? Well, go to the swap meets. Go to your swap meets and look. Every booth who sells toys is going to have that figure. Why? Because it's quote unquote hard to get or rare. That's it must not be that rare if they're sitting on five or six of them. <laughs> That's interesting. I never, I never had, I, I've always had. Hey guys, welcome to the West Coast Initiative. I'm your host, Alex Castillo. It's been a while. I know I was working at a new job that was just taking a lot of overtime. And so the free time that I had, I was spending time with my family and especially uh, Thiago, who was about eight to nine months now. He's, uh, you know, in those stages about to be walking. He's already standing. So, you know, definitely taking this time, especially with all the tax season going on, uh, you know, taking time to get stuff, you know, down, the stuff I couldn't do while working and all. But now I have more free time back with another episode for sure. So this one's a really cool one. We interviewed George Dixon, who is a toy collector, also the Instagram owner of One Shot World and also 858 Patches. He talks to us about the history about toy collect his, his history about toy collecting, a little brief history, even Mattel, Hasbro, Star Wars, um, the world of toy collecting, honestly, uh, what, how people get into it, what to avoid, you know, people who, who uh, you know, try to go to different targets or Walmart to try to get the, the limited edition. He, he goes into depth about all that if you it's a really fun episode to get into especially since i i love it because you know i collect random toys as well as you can see in the background but uh you know let's cut this short and let the talk begin hey guys welcome to the west coast initiative i'm your host alex castillo back in action i know we took a little break uh, and during this break, I ended up working at this new place called Connect PV, up and coming company, which is actually a cool place where I just met our next guest, who is George Dixon. It's a toy collector, um, also owner of the One Shot World Instagram page, 858 Patches. And he, you were mentioning also to cos, Cosplay, you said? Uh, cosplay. I actually, uh, I don't know if you can see it right now, but I cosplay as Negan from uh, The Walking Dead. Yes. And I'm part of uh, the San Diego Sci-Fi Coalition. Yes. Um, and I went call myself a super active member but uh they do a lot of charity work around town oh nice dude and i definitely remember you showing me that picture of when you were when you were yeah. negan at comic con i was like yeah. that's not that's not the real negan <laughs> yeah yeah and that was pretty cool i mean uh they had me on uh the walking dead panel i got to go to the uh um, uh, yeah, the Walking Dead panel with um, the guy who created the Walking Dead. Remember, I showed you the picture. Yes, you did. I remember you did. You know, he, he um, Robert or something, Patrick or uh, I, I forgot his name. Uh, yeah. It's slipping me right now. But that was pretty cool to be at Comic Con. They were doing a live panel for the Walking Dead, and they pulled me up on stage. You know, I held out the bat, Lucille. I didn't have my glasses on, so I yeah. couldn't see that far. But I got a lot of texts. George, is that you up there? Is that you? <laughs> so that, that, that was pretty cool. Yeah, that was, I think his name's Kirkpatrick, Robert Kirkpatrick. Wow. I think. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I forget right now. And, Sorry. And, you know, getting to know you, uh, getting to know you these past few months, it, it's, uh, you are you seem to be very well known in the toy collecting, you know, and even in the cosplay toy, and like you are, you know, you've told He's me quite great. He's a great. Yeah. I've been in the game a long time. I mean, you even told me yeah. you're friends with Rakishi, who is a WWE, yeah, yeah. WWE Rikishi, legend. Rakishi's the bomb, man. Yeah. Rikishi from WWE, he, he, he's such an awesome dude. Yeah, yeah and so awesome so for the for our listeners who are listening, who are who is new to George Dixon, like, can you tell us a little bit about you? Like, what, I know I've introduced you and stuff like that, toy collecting, like, what in depth are you, like, who are you, what do you do and stuff like that? Well, uh, um, uh, first off, you know, like, like where I met you, um, Previously, I was in sales, and then uh, COVID took a turn for a different. I went back to work full time, which is where I met you. We're at that company called uh, Connect PV, which is a re 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 uh, renewable energy. Um, father of two, I have a daughter who just turned twenty, and a son who's sixteen in the eleventh grade, and uh, been married almost twenty two years. Been a awesome. toy collector since day one. Since day one, I mean it. it uh, we can start off and I can tell you stories about how early I collected as early as probably 1974, man, wow. six years old, uh, six years old uh, collecting. And, and those, those aren't just memories, man. They're, they're pretty vivid. They're still, there's still stories that I can tell that I can remember. Um, I'll be 53 this year. So, you know, I'm currently 52 years old. So to remember stuff from when you were 
six years old, like, like it was yesterday. It, it, it's pretty good. I mean, you know, yeah. I'll be at 52 is not dead, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm certainly not young anymore. Um, although I feel it, man, you know, and you can tell by all these little things and stuff that I have, man, this just, uh, I don't know if it does something to you, but it just makes you feel good. You know, it, it's certainly something that a lot of people may not understand. A lot of people don't, uh, really get, or maybe just haven't been exposed to, but once they do, they kind of get a feel for it and they kind of see, oh, wow, you know, I got a neighbor, I got a friend, or I got a brother or, or somebody in my family collects something. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, it, it's a, it's a different world out there, but it's, a, it's definitely a fun world. No. And you're so, right. Because, yeah. You're right. Because, you know, it, it's interesting. I wasn't, I would say like the last years before right i wasn't very big on like collecting toys and stuff like that but i did have yeah. a few toys that i literally yeah. loved when that brought a lot of nostalgia right and then yeah i was mentioning you before that we started the show that i got into you know buying pallets like going to swap and stuff like that yeah and a lot of times when i got went to start going just to look around swap meets and stuff i yeah. started seeing all these toys and and it yeah. brought a lot of memories a lot of like it just brings that that's what it is you know that yeah. like man i oh, can't for sure. like there was times it's funny. I was telling my, my fiance so many times that like, you know, I didn't realize how many Batman toys I had when I was a yeah. kid, you know, yeah. like, all these Batman toys. And I'm like, I had that, that like the Batmobile and all that. And yeah. it's, it's a cool, it's a cool trend to get into. Honestly, it's a cool hobby to get into. It definitely is. And yeah. uh, a lot of people your age get into it or, or just even my age or whatever they, so here's how it works in, in, in so-called toy collecting. I buy toys which in turn means I collect them. Uh, but I just straight buy them because I enjoy them. I enjoy going down the toy aisles and looking at them. The nostalgic uh, reasons are, let's say you're a kid. Maybe you come from a home that doesn't have that much money and you got one figure for your birthday. Yeah. You got one figure. And then okay. you look on the back of the packaging and they have 10 different figures. And you're always thinking, oh my God, I'm going to get that one. I'm going to get that one. I'm going to get, and you probably never do. Maybe you buy one more. Yeah. Um, but the chances are it elicits that memory that brings back that memory of when you got this guy for your birthday. Oh, my God, I was into this cartoon and I got it for my birthday and I always wanted the bad guy or I always wanted his sidekick or I always wanted the girl in, in that line. And you never did. Fast forward 15, 20 years. You're not 10 anymore. You're 30. And now you have a job and you got a little bit of extra money. Not everybody has extra money, but for those who are buying the toys, you got a little something, let's just say. Mm -hmm. And you look at that and you're like, oh my God, I can't believe I'm seeing this at Target or Walmart right now or GameStop or whatever. And you're looking at it, you're like, they're making these again? I always <laughs> wanted that guy. And there he is on the shelf. So now you're 30 years old and you buy it. Mm. And that's where it begins, or that's how it can easily begin. So yeah. it brings back those things of, I always wanted that. But now you're a little older and it doesn't necessarily mean it has to be a retro figure that they're remaking. Yeah, It could be, you can search on eBay or offer up and somebody's selling toys from, you know, the, the, the nineties or the early two thousands when you were growing up or whatever. And now you're looking at him like, dude, I want that set, man. I, yeah. I always wanted that spaceship or that, you know, the Batmobile, whatever. So, you know, that, that, that's all easily that can start. You know, what's funny. Too, I think it also start, well, at least, yeah, I'm pretty, pretty sure you can also, uh, you're also can align with this, but my son, you know, like now that he's born, like I have a son, he's nine yeah. months, you yeah. know, and now thinking about it, it's like, wow, I'm going to be able to play with these toys, toys, like I'm going to buy wow. them toys. And then, you know, I'm going to yeah. be able to play with them. Like, yeah. it's kind of cool to still have like that, that childhood still mentality, especially when you have kids of your own, you know, you oh, definitely bring oh, that definitely. imagination and whatnot. So it, it's, I'll tell you where you're headed. Uh, uh, from having a little boy and just all little boys gravitate towards dinosaurs and trucks now, or, you know, truck cars, you know, uh, construction, dump trucks, fire engines. Um, nowadays you got monster trucks, monster trucks are built by two companies. Hot wheels does monster trucks. And then the company Mon or spin masters does monster jam. So once your little son gets into cars, hot wheels, they're only 99 cents. You, you get, you slide him a dollar when he's at target, he's going to feel like a King when he buys that hot wheel. But you're going to start looking at it like, I like that one. Oh, I like that Oldsmobile. I like that Impala. I like that four by before you know it, you're buying them too for him to play with or for you to collect, which, which it, it doesn't really matter. I'm just saying you're going to start to look at them with a different eye. 
mm-hmm. while your wife goes to shop and go gets the milk, the cookies, or go looks for a shirt at Target, babe, I'm going to take my son and I'm going to go walk down the toy aisle. It's going <laughs> to happen it, it, with your kid. The nice thing about today's toy market, it's always been too, is there's a little boy section. Little boys right now, they're whatever cartoons on Nickelodeon or Disney Junior, that's what toy lines are out at the toy. So when your son starts watching uh, Paw Patrol or a uh, uh, Peppa Pig or something like that, there's a toy line that goes with it. And you will gravitate towards that because your son will look at that and go, daddy, that's what I watch. And then you're going to get one. Before yeah. you know it, you'll see stuff that you like, um, like the movie Cars. All little boys right now currently go through Lightning McQueen, Kachow, you know, uh, Manny. Manny's yeah. son loves, uh, you know, Seabass loves um, Lightning McQueen. Yeah. You'll just find yourself getting into stuff and you'll kind of make an excuse for yourself to go down the aisles. I know I did. Yeah. <laughs> no, and that's yeah. really, yeah, no, you're right. I, I, I make excuses now and my son's not even, you know. Oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so let's go back. I'm going to buy him and save him for him. <laughs> let's go back to your childhood. Like what was your first toy collection? How did, what you was, what? not your first toy, but your first toy collection. My first toy collection. Okay. So let, let's rewind. So I grew up uh, single, uh, with single parent home. Uh, uh, I'm half Filipino, half Mexican, but I was raised by a white man. Uh, my stepdad raised me. He, he passed last year and, um, uh, he's the one who raised me. Piece. My mom married him when I was eight years old. So previous to that, I was in Los Angeles. I didn't move to San Diego until I was eight years old, 1976. So I would collect, um, there's a company called Mego, M-E-G-O, the Mego Corporation. They were the first little seven-inch figures with cloth clothes, rubber boots. They had gloved hands, and they did all the superheroes. They were called World's Mightiest Heroes, and it was by mm-hmm. Mego Corporation. Mm-hmm. Those right there were like today's Hot Toys. Hot Toys are a high-end. This is a Hot Toy. This is a high-end figure with all cloth, you know, all, um, uh, all movable parts. To me, that was my Hot Toy. Mm-hmm. To, to get those was the feelings that I had going to Toys R Us back then and seeing an aisle full of those was incredible. Plus, they were probably about $4.99, $5.99, which I, I didn't have $5.99, not, definitely not at six, seven, eight years old. But my mom used to, it was a planter's peanut jar with the, you know, the ones with the yeah. rubber lid? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She it. And she would tell, always tell me in Spanish, you know, mijo, save your money. She would put change in their change. Mm. Down the street, my buddy Sam was a, sing, a single parent, just his mom. Once a month or every other month or two months, whatever, she would take us to Toys R Us. So I would run to the kitchen, jump up on the kitchen counter, get it from the, the cabinet, open it up. My mom would count it out. Maybe I'd have seven bucks. Seven bucks was like, that was into the, that yeah, was my stimulus you. check, brother. That was my <laughs> stimulus check. That was I opened 14. that up. That was the stimulus check. It was deposited already. <laughs> so the feeling I had for that meant that I had a little money in my pocket And my friend's mom was driving us both to Toys R Us. And I can remember vividly anything he picked up, I had to pick up the same. And we had to get the same because, you know, in this case, you didn't get one was stronger than the other or whatever the case was when you're when you're that little. But this is my friend. He likes what I like. And we both like that same thing. So why not each get one? And it was nice because there was no fighting or nothing like that. But I collected Mego figures. And then there was another line of, um, I think they were eight or nine ish. They were called big Jim. Big Jim was, I believe by Mattel and they had these rubber arms and they came with accessories. So big Jim could have been a construction worker. He could have uh, chopped down trees. He was a jungle hunter. He was an answer, a smaller answer to GI Joe. Mm. So GI Joe in the sixties was military based toys. Yeah. It was all military based. So when they first came out with GI Joe's, they were tall, Action figures, which, you know, people who tease you like to say, oh, dolls. Okay, so call them dolls. It doesn't offend me. And, you know, I know you're trying to get under my skin, but that's okay. Um, so in the 60s, Barbie had owned the toy aisles. Yeah. They replaced board games. They replaced yo-yos. They replaced all that stuff. So Barbie hit the aisle. Somebody thought, why not make a male action figure, put clothes on it, and sell it. So they made French Revolutionary. They made British soldiers. They made Vietnam. They made U.S., World War II, everything. In the mid-60s, when the war was really going on, Vietnam War, it left a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths. So sales went down 
on GI Joe in the sixties, mid sixties. They were like, you know, we can't do it. Albeit boys gravitated towards quote unquote, a doll with real clothes. It, it went gangbusters. They couldn't keep them on the shelves. They couldn't make it enough of them overseas. Fast forward to the late sixties, early seventies, GI Joe had to rebrand itself and they came out with the Kung Fu grip and they came out with a bearded, a flock bearded figure. Mm-hmm. And he was now called man of adventure. So now he was an astronaut. He was a fireman. He was a jungle hunter, just like those big gym figures. And, uh, I collected those and um, I can't tell you what line I collected because fortunately enough for me, I collected every damn thing that was out there. And I was really, I could use the word blessed, I guess, to say that uh, I can name, I can rattle off a lot of toy lines or toy figures that I had a big part in. I mean, I uh, starting from the seventies, man, Yeah, you want to ask about the seventies, I'll tell you what was hot. And, and, and what took off and what was the trend in the United States. And by 1977, Star Wars hit. And when Star Wars hit, it wasn't like a movie today. When Star Wars hit, it was a, a fucking phenomenon. It was, yeah. it was different. You giving me this podcast right now? Your calzones were Star Wars. <laughs> your, your hat was Star Wars. Everything behind you is Star Wars. It was just... It was a phenomenon. And yeah, I, got, I got Star Wars in the back right now. <laughs> man, I, I got an awesome story. I got an awesome story. So, so 1977, they couldn't, China, when they signed the deal, they sent uh, the people who created the Star Wars figures, uh, George Lucas and yeah. them, they sent it out to several different toy manufacturers and they all passed on it. So, when they finally got one, it was a small company out of Cincinnati, Ohio called Kenner, Kenner Toys. Yes. Kenner was very small. And, um, they decided to jump on it. They were going to make them. However, sending the molds to China and coming back and forth takes a little while. So they weren't going to have them in time when the movie came out. So when the movie came out, it was it was crazy. It was a phenomenon. Star Wars was United States. Star Wars was basically the world. The world we revolved around Star Wars. And you could say I'm, I'm speaking as a corny fanboy. Go back, read Hollywood. Hollywood will tell you Star Wars was the craze. Yeah. Anyhow, uh, by 1978, that's when the toys started rolling in. They manufactured them and they started hitting the shelves here. So my story is, so 1978, I'm turning 10. I was born in 1968. So 1978, um, I said, mama, mama, tell everybody all I want is Star Wars. I don't want nothing else but Star Wars. And she tells me, mijo, you know, those things cost a lot. They were $2.99 a figure, okay, for, for the little three and three quarter inch on yeah. the card like this, the Kenner card, they were um, two ninety nine, I think, or three twenty seven, something like that. So she says, "Don't expect a lot." And I said, "I won't," but just tell them that's all I want. And when you're a little kid in the seventies, your birthday parties consist of a dozen friends, and it's basically a cake and ice cream party. Maybe some hot dogs, uh, but it's cake and ice cream. So comes time to open up the gifts. Bingo! I get one, dude. I, I open it up and I get C three PO. I'm like, oh man, I finally got a Star Wars figure. And I was like, dude, I, I, I can tell you right now that the butterflies in my stomach were, were huge. They were, they were, they were, they were huge. They were like eagles. And I got another figure and it was freaking Darth Vader. I'm like, I got the number one bad guy in this whole movie. You know, I'm like, I, by this point, man, I, I, I was ready to jump for joy. Then I got freaking Chewbacca. I'm like, uh, I got three Star Wars figures on my birthday. I could not. I couldn't believe it. I, it. I just these are the original but, ones, the original Kenners. I still have them. Oh. I, I still have my original figures. So from 1978, so I got C3PO, uh, um, Chewbacca, and Darth Vader. And then my mama comes and she whispers. She has a little box. Maybe it's, maybe it's a little bit bigger than this. A little bit bigger than this, and it's wrapped up. And she has another one. And I know it's a wrap figure. It's on top. And she says, "Mijo, I went looking everywhere." And I couldn't, mama couldn't find anything, but there's this. So to me, I was like, that's two more toys than the three I already got. So let me get them, man. I opened these two toys, not these, but my Star Wars. I opened it with a quickness. I got Luke Skywalker, bro. Luke Skywalker is like the ultimate. That's the (laughs) dude, right? That's, I got Luke and Darth Vader. You got the hero and and then you got the badass. (laughs) So I got that. And then I start to open up the package. And I got the land speeder. 
So wow. when I got that land speeder, it's it was a ship, you know, a car, little, you know, the, the, no, the I, land I, I remember the Tatooine speeder. one, right? The Tatooine one. Yeah. So that night, brother, Darth Vader sat shotgun with Luke. Chewie <laughs> sat in the back, and C three PO sat in the back. <laughs> All four of them rode deep. I was I was in heaven, and I entertained myself every day. Everywhere I went, I either had a Hot Wheel in my pocket or an action figure. Um, it sucked because my the, the family that I grew up with is my Mexican side, all in Los Angeles. So come every Christmas morning, Christmas morning, that same year, 1978. So my birthday is August 29th. So September, October, November, December, a mere four months later, I got Obi-Wan Kenobi. Wait, and, pause, uh, pause, sorry. Your, yeah. your birthday is August 29th? Yeah, August 29th. Oh, the same as my fiance, the Patty. Oh, yeah. okay, that's cool. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, that's cool. That's same right. as Michael Jackson. <laughs> that's Michael good. Jackson was August 29th. You're right. Oh, yeah. wow. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I had so, to pause you. I was, I was just like, yeah. oh, that's, that's the same thing. Yeah, that's cool. So, you know, um, uh, getting those figures, man, was just everything. And the, the hard parts about getting toys, especially like on Christmas, we would take off to Los Angeles after we opened gifts. And I wasn't allowed to bring anything. And that sucked. Because my oh. mom would always say, oh, you're going to lose it. You're going to... Now, pieces are going to be missing or your cousins are going to get it, whatever the case was. I was and I was like, how are you going to let a 10 year old open up 10 gifts, toys, and I can't take one with me? I hated it, bro. I, I hated it. That was the worst. I was like, can I stay home? I won't do nothing. I'll live off a of cereal until tomorrow. You know, whatever the case was. But yeah, so the first toy lines that I can remember is another company called Remco, R-E-M-C-O, Remco. And they were the universal monsters. And to me, in the 70s, monster movies were, I can't even, I can't even describe how cool Godzilla was, King Kong, uh, Giant Robot. And then the, the smaller monsters were Frankenstein, Dracula, Werewolf, The Mummy. Those were the figures by Remco. And they had, they were, they were like Mego. Um, but they had actual cloth clothes and they had glow hands and glow heads. So I used to, uh, I used to turn off the lights or no, just have the light bulb and put them all up against the light bulb. So it, they would get, you know, the glowing and then they would shut them off and you know, they would glow at night. And I, yeah. uh, I remember getting in trouble. I was a little boy and we had a lamp, you know, the lampshade. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yes. Okay. Wow. I put up, I put a towel over the lampshade so I can put my figures on top and they wouldn't fall down, like kind of like this. Mm. But that thing got hot and it started to brown and smoke. Oh, no. <laughs> because I, I left it. My mom came in, dude. That was it for me. I got in trouble. <laughs> but as far as, you know, the, the toy lines, I mean, toy commercials always showed all the toys. And they showed all the toys. Like when you were little, I don't know if toy commercials, action figure commercials showed them in like outside and like with real waterfalls and little rivers and the backgrounds were just so cool. Yeah, no, they did. I mean, I in the nineties, the, the toy commercials were still. I don't know how the toy commercials are now these days, but toy commercials yeah. in the nineties, at least the Hot Wheels, I remember for sure. Oh, yeah. It was just like so cool, and I was I was they also on Hot Wheels of just like getting the tracks more so yeah, to track. build my track. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah, uh, the, the tracks. I mean, that's going to be. I'm telling you, man, you're in for you're in for a good ride, literally. Uh, when you get into Hot Wheels, Hot, Hot Wheels is big. Hot Wheels is a huge, there's a huge adult community, uh, die cast, you know, they're too cool to say Hot Wheels anymore. So they got to say die cast. Really? So, <laughs> a huge die cast community. There are die cast collectors, you know, um, which means that all the dudes old like me, well, all this great. They're in the aisles of Target and Walmart. They're looking for Hot Wheels all the time. I just buy what I like. If I see a car and I like it, I'll buy it. Cost a buck. You know, why not? Those guys look for different rims, color changes, different logos and mismarked places. And, you know, they'll buy a Hot Wheel for a dollar and sell it for 30. Um, that's not really my thing. Uh, I'll buy a Hot Wheel for a dollar and I'll open it. <laughs> you know, that, 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 that's, that's what I like. But, so um, I was going to ask you actually going into that, that, that little topic right there that you're saying that toy called the hot wheels toy collectors or die cast collectors they go yeah. for certain types yeah you as a collector what do you now that you've like you know now that you know what you usually collect more and so what what do you usually now like look for into collecting 
as far as diecast goes no 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 and for you in general like your oh collection. okay um yeah. you know what man anything uh yeah like i got a wide variety of things this is a wrestler i don't know if you can see him this is razor ramon um this is if you look at my page uh i've got tons of wrestlers razor ramon was a, a popular wrestler in you know uh, uh the mid 90s um there's this figure right here this is japanese animation right here this is the one piece Luffy, yeah, Monkey D. Luffy. Where is he from? Uh, One Piece. Uh, One it's Piece? on Netflix. Oh, it's a okay. Japanese animation cartoon. Uh, I don't know how I got into it, but I did, and I thought <laughs> the little character was pretty cool. This is a Batman metal figure. It comes with a motorcycle. Well, it doesn't oh, come wow. with a motorcycle separate. It's a big skull face. Wow, that's dope. <laughs> yeah, you can see. So, you know, uh, if we're gonna talk about what's hot out there and uh, quality wise. I, I can talk about that too. This right here is Hot Toys. These are pretty much, you know, a higher end collectible, so to speak, action figure. And uh, this 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 one's pretty high. Right now, there's there's you can buy stuff that is only available online. A lot of it's Japanese imports or, or stuff made overseas that are for overseas market. Uh, a lot of it's called third party. And by third party, um, they don't have the license the license mm -hmm. uh, on the figures. Like I can tell you one right here. Take a look at this. This is by a company called Dam Toys. Mm -hmm. So this is a small soldier, but if you look on the side right here, looks like Charlie Sheen from Platoon, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it is Charlie Sheen from Platoon, but you can't call it that. So they call it the Vietnam War. So this mm -hmm. is what they would term third party. So third party is uh, unlicensed. Charlie Sheen's not getting the cut of this. Um, this is really geared for overseas markets, but they're imported. So um, you deal with that over here. This is licensed. This is uh, Disney owns this, you know, uh, Lucasfilms, you know, Disney. So this has the Disney logo and brand all over the packaging. They get the cut of that. So it's made overseas for Disney. Um, a lot of the what I go look for now, like this is one of the big ones. Don't ask me how I got into this, but Power Rangers. Power Rangers is a line right now. This is the Grizzio Ranger. And I guess. This actor played the Green Ranger three different times. Mm. After Tommy, he played in uh, three different uh, TV shows. This one happens to be uh, Power Rangers Zeal. Yeah, this is the yeah, Zeal Green like Ranger. Zeal. So, yeah, so he's pretty hot right now. Uh, a lot of collectors want this. The reason why I get it is my nephews, who were just a little bit older than you, I used to buy them a lot of figures when they were younger. I bought them the Power Rangers. So even though I was older and I didn't watch that, I lived through it you know, vicariously through my nephews. So it brings back nostalgia for me. My nephews who are your age and just maybe a couple of years older, yeah. that was their toy life. So I look for those at Target and Walmart. And then there's, uh, there's other ones. Now, I don't buy everything. This is oh, Thanos. Wow, that's cool. Yeah, this is, uh, cool. this is by uh, Marvel Legends. Marvel Legends, I, I, I buy, I pick and choose what I want. It's a, it's a nice toy line with a big, uh, fan yeah, following yeah uh, yeah marvel legends is pretty huge i'm getting these small ones right now these are what they call the retro ones the guys who collect the big marvel legends or these six inch ones they don't like these um oh really the reason why they don't there's no articulation these are like five points of articulation but they're retro these are going back to the late 80s early 90s so mm. i like that this retro packaging is it's old school and uh for me I don't need all the points of articulation. Uh, um, it, 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 this has a fun factor for me, man, the nostalgia factor. So I think I go looking, I'm finding myself buying a lot of uh, Hot Wheels. Um, I customize them. I get wheels put on them, uh, rims and tires. So I have to show you some pictures that, that I get. But um, these I purchased uh, online. Um, like I said, I'm a distributor. So, uh, you know, I, I, I get these as well. Um, Specifically, what I look for, I like to look for whatever latest and greatest Power Rangers that are out there. I try to buy everything from this line that comes out there. Wrestlers, like I said, the wrestlers. Here's another classic. This is uh, Jerry oh, the King. Oh, Jerry the King. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Jerry the King. So th th this line right here is by Mattel. I'm huge into these. Not into the modern guys. Not that I don't like the modern guys, but the amount that they come out with monthly. So in toy collecting, figures come out in waves. So let's just say wave 10 is coming out. Wave 10 will consist of six figures. So 
each line, Power Rangers, Marvel Legends, uh, McFarlane, Power uh, Marvel Legends has X-Men. They've got Spider-Man. They've got Fantastic Four or they've got whatever. They each have their own wave with like six figures. So when the wrestlers do, I tend to only stick with classic wrestlers, the wrestlers from the 80s and the 90s um, and, and, and the early 2000s, the Attitude Era. Yeah. Uh, NWO and stuff like that. Because like if I collect and... everything that comes out, yeah, there's just so much. And yes. I like everything, but I got to put a <laughs> cap on some stuff. Yeah, man. But if, 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 well, where, where if do you, where do one, you put the cap, George? Cause I, you're busting out <laughs> toys like left and right. I didn't even uh, know you had a, you're like, you have like a stack right there. <laughs> well, my wife isn't home yet. So there is no cap. Uh, <laughs> so we just walked in the door. There's a cap. Uh, um, you know, what, man, uh, I don't know because, uh, you know, I'll, I'll sell toys to make that money. So I'll tell you this, not one, not one copper penny from what I earn from work goes into my hobby. Everything that you see, everything that I show, everything that I have is made on the side by me. So mm -hmm. the money that goes into the bank, that's for food, that's for groceries, that's for mortgage, that's for a car payment, that's for a cell phone bill, that's for my wife. I don't even know what the hell I make. I don't even know what the hell I bring home. As long as the lights stay on. Yeah. You know what I mean? So my wife is good with money. She, she's, she's frugal. She, she's on point with all bills. I don't worry about none of that. I just show up to work 40 plus hours a week. You know, that's a lie. It's like 55 plus hours a week. Uh, I show up and that goes to that. However, my hobby money comes from stuff that I make. So, uh, you know, I found a way. I wanted these things, man. I want them. It's, yeah, I started the hashtag that everybody uses now, plastic crack addiction. <laughs> Use the hashtag plastic crack addiction and you'll see all action figures. Mm -hmm. um, so it's used everywhere. That, that's a big one that I used to use. Now I just use open your figures. Um, <laughs> but um, uh, I, I, there's no cap. I don't think there's no cap. I mean, uh, I buy a little bit of everything. And, and man, the, the more I get, the more I look at it, I'm like, man, my house isn't getting any bigger at this point. So, you know, but for me, the fun in this hobby is opening them up. Uh, setting them up in little scenes and taking pictures or just taking pictures of the figure loose itself. So I don't know if you follow, you know, you keep up with the pictures that I post or maybe uh, you do that. I, no, I do. I, I was watching it earlier. The, 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 but the wrestlers, I thought it was Ray Mysterio earlier, but. Uh, oh no, no, it was, um, those guys are the, the Lucha brothers. Uh, yeah. That was Ray Phoenix and uh, Pentagon Jr. Those are, so those, those are guys really wrestle cool. from AEW. What's that? Those are really cool. Those pictures that you take. And if, yeah. if, and if like for the listeners who hasn't seen George's page, you guys got to go to One Shot World, and he doesn't not just have like the wrestlers like posted up. It was a really cool one, this the monster truck one. I'm not gonna lie, yeah. When when I was just looking at it, like your whole thing, like just like the, yeah. Not without scrolling it yet, I really yeah. thought that those monster trucks were at El Paisas <laughs> Taco. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> that's my boy uh, Fabian, uh, 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 Fabian six one nine. Uh, okay. that, that's that's him and he's he's into all die cast but it's a little mini taco shop and i put the yeah. monster trucks there and i get up real low and i take the picture so that's called what they call a forced uh perspective mm. so forced perspective i'm taking that something really small and, and it looks big in your eyes and you know it fooled a lot of people you know but it's the yeah. angle and the way you take the picture yeah yeah it fooled me for sure dude i was like yeah real? and then i clicked on it and i was like Oh, that's a toy. <laughs> yeah, I, I collect a lot of monster trucks, man. Monster yeah. Jam, I uh, um, I would go to, so in the late 80s or mid 80s, I would go to, which which was then Jack Murphy Stadium. That was before Qualcomm. So yeah. it was Jack Murphy Stadium where the Padres play in Chargers. They would have what they called uh, um, uh, Supercross, you know, the motorcycles. But the mid show at Supercross uh, they weren't two separate shows like they are today. Today, you got Monster Jam, and then you got Supercross. Um, back then, it was Supercross, but the middle of the show was Monster Trucks. It's either mud bogs, monster truck pulling, or, or, or crushing cars. Mm -hmm. And I, I was fascinated with them. So when my kids got of that age, I told my wife, I said, hey, my dad used to take me. I'm taking my kids. You think they're going to like it? You think they're going to like it? I said, they're going to love it. But it gives me an excuse to go. So once we did... I bought my son some Monster Jam trucks. We were off and running, and I probably have a collection of, I'm probably sitting on over 300 trucks. 
Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm sitting on over 300 miles easily. Yeah, I haven't even counted, bro. I, I might be knocking on the door 400. Uh, I didn't even know. I thought you were, I, I didn't even know you had that many on track. I didn't oh, know, man. I never heard you yeah. talk about them. That's crazy. Yeah. So on YouTube, if you look up Johnny and his monster trucks, my son was hugely popular. And then because he got so popular, everybody started naming theirs Johnny and their monster trucks. So now he's filtered in, but these are, these are old videos. My son is 16. These were when he was like four years old, five years old, but uh, I do remember you he got me over a million YouTube. hits. Yeah. Johnny, wow. Jonathan, Jonathan and his monster trucks or yeah. Jonathan and his monster trucks. Wow. So yeah, I have a lot, man. Hot wheels. I had a huge hot wheel, you know, and I would sell them off every now and then. But as you can see, man, toy collecting has been, has been huge, a huge part of my life. You know, uh, um, it's just fun. So I look at it this way. So people who might be listening going, why is this old guy? Why is he like toys? You know, what are you buying toys for? What, what do you got? Listen, I'm not, I, it's not like I'm racing home from work and playing in the living room, you know, making them fight. Bow, bow, bow. Okay. Maybe I do sometimes, <laughs> but you, you look at it this way. There's worse that you can be spending your money on. That's true. I could be that guy who my wife has to go pick up from the bar because they drink too much. I could be that guy who drinks at the bar and drives his ass home drunk every night to a family who doesn't see him. He only eats, showers, and goes to bed and goes plays golf on Saturday. Saturday you know what I mean? Um, I'm not that dude. Uh, I could be buying a big bag of pot. I could be buying, not that that's bad because there's a lot of people <laughs> do that too. You know, spend your money on herb. I don't care. But th this is where this is where it goes. And, and, you know, my buddy Fernando will say, you can't put a price on happiness. Yeah. And he always says that you can't put a price on happiness. And these are things these aren't harming nobody. Yeah. And in a, in a what's, way what, what's my correlation with wrestling. I, I grew up watching it. I yeah. love the WWF. Hulk Hogan, Andre the Giant, Superfly Snuka, Iron Sheik. I watched all the old school Ric Flair, the. The NWA matches. I watched Saturdays was for wrestling, dude. Like, like, like dudes in Mexico watch Chivas every weekend. <laughs> I was watching wrestling. And so now that I'm older and they make these and they make the, this was just made last year or this year or last year of a, of a guy from the mid 90s, Razor Ramon. To get him now in 2021, that's awesome. Yeah, that's and cool. it just goes with the, the collection. So. What it brings back to me is those cool feelings from way back when. So now I get to hold that cool feeling in my hand. So I think that's that's the correlation. You and know it, what I mean? That, and, that's, I, and I was going to say it's also in a way it's, it's a way of it's therapeutic and escapism as well at the same time. Oh, right? oh definitely. Oh, you definitely. Know, because it's, it's kind of like your own world. You're not you're not having to deal with uh, other stuff, that other negative energies. Exactly. Energy. Exactly. Let me tell you this. So they interviewed me for the local paper here. Uh, I've, been in, I've been in the newspaper a few times over here. And one of those questions were, why do you like them still? So my answer at that time was because it takes me back to a time when things were easier. We didn't have rent or a mortgage. We didn't have car payments. We didn't have insurance. We didn't have a food bill, a light bill, electricity, all those things. It, it, was, it was a time when an adult gave you something and you just played with it and you admired it and you loved it. And you just, you didn't have nothing. You, you were carefree. You didn't have nothing to worry about. It was toys. Life was toys for any little boy. Today's day is different. Now you got handheld electronics. You got an iPhone. Mm -hmm. uh, an iPhone has replaced kids going outside to kick a ball, grab a stick and hit a ball with it. Um, throw rocks. Uh, bounce a tennis ball, throw a tennis ball against a garage when your buddy has the bat. You know what I mean? You're, you're gone are the days that kids today wouldn't even know how to throw a frisbee to save their life. They don't even know how to throw a softball. You know what I mean? I think uh, one of my friends, uh, uh, Lewis, um, they're big in the toy community, Sue and Lewis. And Lewis says he's going to teach his nephews how to play softball. He says, and he made sense to me, it's a skill everybody should learn because when you work for companies and they have company softball events, company company baseball events or whatever, to get out there and play, to get out there and do something, not the phone app, not the MLB phone app, you yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> get out there and, 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 and play something, you know? Uh, I took all my toys outside, bro. There's probably tons of toys that were buried in the dirt 
army toys, you know, for people my age, little tiny green plastic army figures were, were, were huge, you know, huge. And I think toys today is just, it, it, it is an escape. I can yeah. be around my entire collection and, and feel good about it. You know, it, it's just, it, it, it's a place of comfort, I guess, yeah. you know, as corny as that may sound to some. No. And, 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 and it's, you know, I mean, I find it in a way is, and like, it's so cool. Like, just setting up, you know, like even this, you know, oh, what I mean? like just setting it up how you want to. That's the best. You're like, damn it. Yeah. You like, look at it. You're like, even I, I like, you're right. Because there is going to be people, especially when, like, I remember there was this one time when I was in high school and uh, I was into Yu-Gi-Oh at the time. Right. Yeah. And I think this is where I think my kind of like my childhood kind of died a little bit. Yeah. I remember I was, I was, I went into the library because i remember i didn't have a computer at the time and i wanted to go on the internet and it was yeah. like barely kind of new and stuff like that i wanted yeah, to yeah. Yu-Gi-Oh stuff and i got made fun of for looking at Yu-Gi-Oh yeah stuff. and that kind of like changed my direction of like okay yeah just, that'd be that's quick. unfortunate you know it, it, it's it can be cruel and they you just know, you're don't right. know and then yeah. once i grew up and like now like looking back and it's just like i was if i could talk to myself back then it's like don't even listen to those guys man that's like it keep keep doing what you're doing like love you you know like and and it's crazy because you know i probably threw away a bunch of my pokemon cards even around that same time and now look, yeah and then look yeah look at it now like i could have been a million there <laughs> yep, it's huge right now pokemon uh pokemon is big Yu Gi Oh cards you yeah know, uh, uh, what's that other game um black magic or magic 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 the gathering magic the gathering. that's that's huge but Yu Gi Oh uh, um uh, pokemon has made a resurgence mm-hmm. and it, it's um athletic cards baseball cards basketball cards even soccer now um cards uh, sports cards, cards are, are huge sport, yeah, it, 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 it's it. a big thing it's not my thing I, I did it for a long time I, I i did certain things but um it's made a resurgence. And just last week, uh, Post Malone did that uh, Pokemon's, what, 25th anniversary? So he had a, he had a concert. And oh, he's, really? he did a remake of somebody's song, but they animated him. So he was there for the special 25th anniversary of Pokemon. And they had a big online thing. And Post Malone was the concert. So, I, I, you know, man, that shows you how big Pokemon is, man. You should go look in the trash for the cards, brother. <laughs> yeah, no, I know, right? It's true. I, yeah. I, my mom still tells me to this day, why come on this pendejo? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you threw them. You're the yeah, one threw them. I, I know, right? It's like, <laughs> but yeah. um, we're, I want to get to the topic because I know when I first met you and I kind of started talking to you about, you know, the whole reselling industry and whatnot. Yeah. You tell me there is a difference on, on, on um, when people buy toys to just try to resell them you know there's toy collecting and toy toy competing yes Um, and you were telling me like the differences and even like the challenges of that because people will resell a a certain toy at a certain price and uh now everybody thinks that this toy goes for like five hundred dollars when they yeah like 20 bucks can you talk a little bit about that yeah okay so what what he's saying is alejandro saying alex is saying is Let's just say there's a wrestler and there's a, there's a new one. Uh, there's a Royal Rumble wrestler out right now um, called uh, um, the, the Ultimate Warrior. So people want that Ultimate Warrior fig, figure and he's hard, he's hard to get. So when resellers know that an item is quote unquote hard to get, they comb the aisles daily and they look, they, they, they use phone apps called BrickSeek. BrickSeek checks the UPC code and they can tell you what stores have them in stock. Mm-hmm. And it'll say the National City Target has them in stock. The uh, Poway Target has them in stock. They'll hit them places and they'll buy it. So a figure that somebody pays $20 for, they take to the swap meet and they throw on a $65 price tag. They'll start looking at eBay and eBay will, some joker will put it for 90 bucks. So then you get these guys who resell and the first thing all they do is they go to eBay and they look, Oh, it's going for 90. It's not really going for 90. Some jerk put it for 90 and now the market and people looking for this figure or who find it, they look it up on eBay and they're like, Oh my God, this goes for 90 bucks. Now I'm never, ever going to open it because it's, it's, it's worth too much. It's BS. Those resellers 
create the market. They, 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 it's a false market, but because it's already hard to find, let's just say they make a case of these and there's 12 figures to a case or six figures to a case or no, no. Yeah. 12, 12. There's only one of this guy, but there's three of the other core character, three undertakers, three stone cold, Steve Austin's because they're popular three John Cena's whatever, because they're popular Roman reigns, but there's only one of this guy. First of all, he's classic. Today's kid doesn't know this guy. So they, they really don't want it. So therefore, you're not going to get three of these in the box because they'll be what they call shelf warmers. Every time you go to the store, that's all you're going to see on the shelf is this figure. But the, the ones that you have a lot of, moms will buy those for junior because they know those characters. She'll go and she'll buy the current guy. She'll buy uh, um, uh, Roman Reigns because she knows who he is. She'll buy Brock Lesnar uh, because she knows who he is. The obscure ones, she doesn't really know, but those are made for really the collector fan base. So what that happens is, so you get a guy who knows what the hard figure is. He travels all over San Diego from Oceanside to San Ysidro to Lakeside. He hits 20 targets and he scores five or six of them. So that's five or six that local collectors aren't going to get for their collection. So the only way they see it is they look up on OfferUp or they look on Mercari or they look on eBay. And then they see it for a freaking sky high price. So now what that puts in the local collector's head is when I find it, I'm certainly not going to open this now because it's worth too much. You know, it's false. It, 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 it's to each his own, I guess. But you get those guys who, who resell. In the toy community, it's called a scalper, a toy scalper. Those guys will never admit that they're toy scalpers, but that's what they're doing. They're taking something that's coveted and they hoard it. They'll buy like six, seven, eight of them. And they're like, are you kidding me? I'm getting $65 for these at the swap meet. So wow. they're, but their, their market is their friends, their fellow collectors. So all they're doing is they're getting the target five minutes before you. They're buying a figure for X amount of money. Let's just say 20 bucks. And they go and sell it for 75. But because you're their friend and they know you, I'm going to hook you up. I'll give it to you for 65. I'll give it to you for 10 less. Yeah. And you want to slap the crap out of them. You're like, uh, you know, I get it though. Their time, their effort, their gas. Okay. So maybe a 10 to $15 up hike for, for all of that. It's not bad. That, that's not really that bad. But when you can find something on your shelf for, that, that you want for 20 bucks, mm -hmm. as opposed to paying 35, You'd really have to weigh that out. Do I really want that one? I haven't come across it, but I really want that one for my collection. $15 isn't so bad. Uh, and it's going to be less because after taxes, you know, another buck 50 or whatever. So, you know, 14, 15, 13, 50, whatever. You got to weigh that out. But these guys who take them and sell them for that high of money, yeah, you get that rush. You get that rush of, dude, I paid 20 and I sold it for 80 bucks. I made 60 on it. What did you really do with that 60? You went and put some gas. Maybe you got some food. Maybe you bought some more toys. Did you really make that 60? Did you really set it aside and you still have that 60? No, you just went and bought more junk. You flipped it. That's what they call it. I I'm just going to flip it. I'm going to buy it for this price, but I'm going to go. Hey, real fast, you've paused. Yeah, I paused. Yeah, I that's what I was going to ask right now. It paused okay, right okay. now. And I, I thought I lost you for a bit. I was like, all right, all right. You. Um, so I could see you, you were just paused. I can still hear you though. Oh, but okay. I'll go. So, you know, to buy for investment, totally wrong. Um, and the reason people quote unquote want to invest, they see the old prices from the seventies and the eighties. A lot of those toys, those were all open. When you got those as a kid, you opened them. You didn't save them. So to find toys from the eighties or even the seventies still in their original packaging, um, is pretty rare. I hate using the word rare in the, in, in toys, but it, it, it's, it's rare, but anything made after the mid nineties on up, everybody had that frame of mind of, I better save it like the old star Wars or the old, old GI Joes. But today's figures are made in such high quantities that everything you want is going to be around 20 years from now, 25 years from now, everything that you thought about in the late 90s early 2000s is available on ebay in pristine packaging because everybody hoarded it everybody had hopes of 
I'm buying these and I'm going to sell them for a lot. Well, when you look on eBay and there's 30 of the same product, you really don't have nothing rare. Although somebody trying to sell it to you is always going to use the term, you know, they don't make these anymore. Yeah, I know because it's 1999. Of course they don't make it anymore. You know, I'm not dumb, but that's their selling point to get you to say, you know, man, these aren't made anymore. Well, uh, uh, of course not. But don't buy and invest. Do what you do. Buying some stocks, buying some bonds, buy a mutual fund, you know, put money in a 401k, 401k. Don't, 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 not toys. Toys are for yeah. fun. Toys are an escape from reality yeah and well I'm, i do want to get to the part because you do also resell too as well and i don't know do you do you consider reselling it or do you consider or, it, it is it yeah. is you know uh, uh i get from a distributor and i sell but you know for for the manufacturer's suggested mm-hmm. retail what what it goes for you not know for, what, not, what the going not, rate going. yeah you're not trying to go skyrocket on yeah the no, no 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 yeah. so i mean you know uh it's a different market and it's this stuff right here, the one yeah. six stuff. So, uh, yeah, it, it, it's different in that sense. And the and inventory I- is not coming from target or Walmart. Mm-hmm. Those guys who sell like that resellers, that's their inventory. They're not ordering cases. They're not ordering. They're not getting cases and, and having these items for themselves. They're, they're, their inventory is based on what they find at their local runs at target and Walmart. Mm-hmm. So, you know, uh, the market's going to fluctuate the inventory. And do you believe, does it hurt the toy community? Like the scalpers, the toy scalpers? Yeah, you know, it, 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 it. so I'm part of a, a page called the Collector Showroom. So mm-hmm. it's run by two of my good friends. Well, there, there's four of us on there as like admins, but uh, Eduardo uh, Pineda and uh, Benjamin uh, Tizapanenko. So they've created this page where, we try to help each other out. One of the number one guys on there, one of my good buddies is this guy named uh, Caesar Gamboa. Caesar is solid. Caesar hits stores. He'll take pictures. George, did you need this one? Did you need it? Gives it to me at retail. That, that, that's awesome. So there's guys who, like I said, scalpers or they're, they're called resellers. They'll buy the, the figures that you want. And they'll go into the store and say, they'll pay 10 bucks for this. But they'll look online, and these are 35 bucks. But because you're their friend, I can do 30. You see what I'm saying? And it's entirely up to you. Nobody is twisting your hand to, to purchase from them. You're not. It's your, it's your adult choice to say, you know what? I'm going to wait. I'm going to try to find it on my own. Or I've been looking for it for so long, I might as well go ahead and pay it and get it out the way. There's no wrong answer there. There's no wrong way. It, it all depends on how you view it. it all depends on how uh, you think about it. But um, there's 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 so many instances where that's the case. Does it hurt them? It certainly doesn't make them feel good. I don't think it hurts the community. It's just not. It makes it less fun. You know, you're you're into this. You're into a hobby. You know, me as a grown man, or you know, you could be a kid, or you could. A, a young man or your age, whatever, you like a certain something. You like Batman. So I want to go out and buy Batman. And oh my God, they made this new Batman from a comic that I read. And it was called The Metal Batman. Uh, metal. I love that comic. So now you go try to get it. And he happens to be the quote unquote hard one to get. And you're like, dude, I can't find him anywhere. As a, as a guy who just wants to go in the toy aisles and look for something that you like, you're not really going to understand. Hey, man, how come I see it on the back of the box, but I never see it on the shelves? Well, go to the swap meets. Go to your swap meets and look. Every booth who sells toys is going to have that figure. Why? Because it's, quote, unquote, hard to get or rare. That's it must not be that rare yeah. if they're sitting on five or six of them. <laughs> That's interesting. I never yeah. I never had – I've always had that thought of, like, why isn't this toy – like, it, it, like I never see this toy on, on the stands or anything like that. I've never thought about people actually going and go get those hard toys. And That's that all they do, and that becomes the only thing they look for. Mm. All the other rest of the figures in that line, if you mm. go and, 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 and you see them hanging on the shelves every time you go, the same ones over and over and over, that's because the resellers buy – the ones that are hard to get or quote unquote hard to get. Um, and they must not be that hard because they're the ones who always find them. So I don't know how that becomes hard to get for everybody else, but for resellers, not hard to get. And then they have all their friends buy for them. So, Hey, I'm really looking for it. And then they'll tell you um, it's for my personal collection. Yeah. Then open it. Oh, uh, no, 
<laughs> oh, how come you're not going to open it then? Um, um, Cause it's going to be at the swap meet next week. That's why that's what's going to happen. And you know, listen, if you're out because you're, if, if you want me to look for these for you, because dude, I'm getting 60 bucks to swap me for them. You know, just say that. Don't, don't, don't say, you know, Hey man, I'm, I'm buying this for my son. That's what toy collectors hate the worst. I'm buying it for my son. And you know, it's for you, uh, yeah. you know, for to resell or whatever the case is, but yeah, to, to, to get back, does it hurt? It just doesn't make the toy community feel good. And the collector showroom is about helping fellow collectors out. You can get on there and you can say, hey, you know what, man? I'm looking for this. Have you come across it? We either take pictures from Target and say, look, man, Poway's got five of them. One, maybe one guy will eat, um, hit you back up and say, dude, can you get that for me? I'll PayPal you the money or I'll Venmo you the money or I'll pick it up this Saturday when I see you. Bingo, you get it. You hand it over to that guy, he gets his figure, you get your money back, and he's happy. And he's like, dude, I was at the swap meet, man. They're selling it for 80 bucks. <laughs> See what I'm saying? So you can yeah. help each other out. I am certainly not hating on somebody trying to make an extra buck. That yeah. is not, that's not it. You, 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 if that's your thing, that's your thing. But just know that your market. That your the, the, that that your market are also your fellow toy collectors. So when they're looking for something for that price, and they help you out, I think in turn you should help them out too. Take one for the team. Hey, yeah. maybe you do have a figure that's worth twenty bucks more than what you paid, but this is your buddy coming up to you and saying, "Dude, you know, I'm I'm, I'm looking for this one. Here you go, bro. I got one." Because you know you're going to come across them again. You just know you are. But they. They stand firm and they just won't do it. So to some of those people, they get shunned. You know, they're, they're like, you can tell and you're like, okay, that's just not where my money's going to go. So when you get a bunch of people who band together and help each other out, it makes the community fun again. But you're always going to have those frustrations. They're, you're always going to have, I'm looking for this figure. I can't find it. Go to the swap meet. Every booth that sells action figures is going to have it. And they're going to have three of them there. And then you wonder why, no wonder I can't get them. No wonder I can't find them. They, they have them all. Mm. Is it jealous because you don't have it? Maybe so. But stay patient. Stay patient. If you don't want to pay the high prices, don't. They're certainly not bending your arm and making you give them that money. So don't give somebody money and then complain. Here you go. Here you go. Man, I can't believe I paid $60 for that. Oh, yeah. That was your choice. Yeah. You shouldn't have to. Again. You can't put a price on happiness. So if you feel good giving them th that money, more power to you. All, you know, more power to you. If that's what makes you happy and you don't want, you work all week and you don't have time to go to Targets and Walmarts every day, um, give them that money and you pay for their service. You know, they brokered the deal. You know, they, they got it for you. So True. there's always two sides to every story. And there's always two, you know, there's always different views, you know, and, and, and that's just one of the, one of the little scenarios. So, so I went to um, Kobe's not too long ago. I was just telling you before the show. Yeah. Um, and I haven't been to Kobe's on a weekend for such a long time. I've only been on the Fridays. Uh, I didn't know there's a huge competition of Funko Pops right now. Um, yeah. And 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 kind of what the topic you're talking about, like you know the conversation you're talking about, reminds me a lot about the Funko Pops because I'll be seeing Funko Pops going for 15, 20, 35, 40. What is is that type of collection? Like, is that the same as as you're talking about? Like people who are it's it's, it's toy competing rather than toy collecting. Bean, they're they're like the new age beanie babies so when you were little beanie babies were popular there were those little stuffed animals with the little tag by ty ty and uh what it is is they get that feeling of i don't want to be left out you want to be able to show your fellow collector oh my god did you get yours ah, i got mine last week you know it's kind of like a, a badge of honor to be able to say hey man that new one just came out I already got it, you know. Talk to me about something else because I already got that one. You don't have it yet? Too bad for you. It's more toy competing than it is toy collecting. Albeit there are hundreds and thousands of Funko Pop collectors who just love the idea of those little cute figures, the big heads with the little bodies. And they make every license there is, which is awesome. Food, movies, superheroes, Star Wars characters, a strawberry shortcake, 
um, um, what every TV show you could think of is probably has a pops made of it. You know what I mean? So it's an awesome line. Pops, pops is really Funko is really, I should say Funko really gives their fans what they want or they make what they think they need. And a lot of the collectors think I need to get it, especially if it's limited run, because then you have something that's very limited and you figure if they make a limited run of 2000 or 1500 and you got 20,000 collectors who are collecting pops, you know, uh, uh, a lot of people yeah. aren't going to get those. Yeah. You know, so the, the rarity in that is, is really big, but it's hard because if you don't get it when you first see it, chances are somebody else is going to pick it up and then they're going to put a premium price on it. And you're going to go, dude, I saw that at Target two weeks ago. Why is it 35? Can't find them no more. Well, guess not. How come you got six of them then? <laughs> you know what I mean? That's what you got to tell. How come you got so many if they're hard to find? But like, that's everything though. That's in every toy line, you know, and that's just collecting. Collecting becomes competing. And it's, it's kind of sad, you know, it's not about, you're not content with what you got. It's all about what I'm going to get and, and, and what I need to get or what you feel you need to get, you know, and now that's kind of, that kind of takes the fun. You get burnt out. You will get burnt out. Everybody who collects something that goes into a diehard, you will reach a plateau where you think about it and you go, you know what? I think I have enough. I think the hype, it's over for me. Like I see the ones behind you. Yeah. That's awesome. You have them out. They're displayed on your shelf. I think that is so cool. And you're a Star Wars fan. Therefore, you got some Star Wars pops. You're not concerned which, with the little sticker that came by, on there. Which, by the way, I got the little Han Solo right here that you got me, dude. <laughs> oh, yeah. The salt and pepper shakers? Yes, sir. Yeah, the salt and pepper shakers. Yeah, that's cool. I found mine. I found mine in the garage, man. But uh, yeah. Um, well, uh, to to tell the the listeners, a couple of weeks ago, I went to the swap meet, or no, I was at a diecast show last month, and my buddy was selling this salt and pepper shaker by Funko, and it was a uh, uh, solo and a solo Grito. Grito. Yeah. So I, I I picked those up for you because I know you know you're a cook, and uh, I thought that was cool. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Yeah, man. I I just I got them out of the box, and I was like. Nah, I think I'm gonna put him over here, you know. There you go. That looks cool. <laughs> it's kinda you know? it's kinda like what you said. Did they you know, even though they're salt and pepper, like I I kind of treat them as like as pop- oh yeah, the regular pops. You know collectibles. I mean? Yeah, collectibles. So and they're they're enjoyable to me, you know what I'm saying? Like you know what, man? Everything anybody collects, I stand behind. I don't care what line it is, I don't care if it's a line that I don't collect or that I don't really care for too much. If you open enough stuff and put enough stuff on a shelf, it all looks good. And I'm not saying what I collect is better than what anybody else collects. Collect with what you like. Collect what you know puts a smile on your face. Collect what uh, is fun to you. You know, I'll, I'll be anything. It could be swap me finds, garage sale finds. It could be a high expensive item. It doesn't matter if it has some sort of meaning to you. Then there's no price you can put on it. You know, you could you could find something at the swap me. Oh, it paused again, dude. I always wanted this guy. Uh. Oh, okay, okay. No, you're good. You're good. I can now, see it, you, though. It, it, you're good. It resumed. It paused a little bit for some reason, but you're good now. Okay. Oh, continue. Continue. George. You know, so yeah, collect, collect, collect what you like. Collect whatever makes you happy, you know, and, and that could be in anything. You know, I did shot glasses for a while. Uh, whenever I'd go somewhere and travel somewhere, I, I collected a shot glass. It's it was like three ninety five, four ninety five, something less than five bucks. You can wrap it up, put it in your luggage, and come home. And now I got a little shot glass for a place I visited. For a while, Comic Con they had these uh, tune tune cups or tune glasses. There were a company that made shot glasses, so I'd pick myself something up at Comic Con. Before I knew it, I made myself a little case, and I got I got I got uh, some pretty cool shot glasses, man. I'll have to show you those sometime. Oh. Yeah, they're r- really nice. So collect what ever it is that makes you happy you know and for some people that's sports cards funko pops hot wheels action figures jerseys hats lids how many yeah. dudes yeah go to yeah. lids yeah. You're right. and, and and pay 50 bucks for a ball cap for a dude my age that's crazy that is 
that is, for for guys in your generation now, you that's, know, that's uh, that's Frankie right there, dude. Frankie, yeah, that's Frankie. Steps. You know, but Frankie's sportsman. <laughs> Frankie looks cool in yeah, that's, he does. That's his thing. You know that that's Frankie likes to rep San Diego, so he's gonna wear whatever <laughs> San Diego has. You know, but for for me, it would be real hard to go and pay fifty bucks for a baseball cap. I just, but to each their own. Yeah. No, like my buddy Fernando said, can't put a price on happiness, man. If that's what makes you happy. And some people sport and look good, you know, jerseys, yeah. basketball jerseys, baseball jerseys. A lot of people get those, you know, it's huge, you know, and um, you'll be surprised what people collect out there. Lighters, Pez. Remember Pez? The oh, little yeah. plastic heads and you lift Pez it back and the candy comes out. That's a, that's its own collecting community right there we were just watching actually not too long ago an old pawn pawn star shop uh episode. oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. brings in his pez collection and whatnot yeah. and i was like from like from from like the very beginning pez and i was like yeah wow that's crazy like those 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 dispensers i remember when i was a kid they were really cool to get you know and yeah. i didn't know i didn't know there was a community until like i read into it's it it's huge let me ask you this have you watched on netflix the toys that made us yes i have which episodes? Dude, I've seen I think I've seen them all. I've seen them all for the most part. The only one I did not see was my little pony. Cause that uh, was good. That, I, that was good too. I didn't yeah. I didn't see it because my fiance didn't want to see it because she I don't know, I don't know if it was a reason, but she just didn't want to see that one. Uh I think it's because her net her niece was so big on it that she was yeah. over it kind of thing. Yeah. So that's why we didn't see that. But I've seen the Ninja Turtles, the the rest oh, that one's good. The wrestler's one of my favorite ones because I like yeah. just like you, I used to buy a lot of wrestlers and stuff like that. Uh Ninja Turtles, I have quite a few actually Ninja Turtles still. And my mom's actually okay. my mom's the one who because my mom loves to go, go to the Swami. So she'll buy okay. me Ninja Turtle figurines, you know. Uh, okay, okay, not, that's cool. Not in boxes, like they're not in boxes, yeah. they're out, you know. Yeah, for sure. I don't care about if like they're out or they've been played with or used. Like the, the point is to have them like kind of like how you have them on your page, like out yeah. doing something like make them look alive go. in your house you know yeah. uh sometimes i'll even with like my small figurines like for instance like i'll show you this obi-1 this little obi-1 kenobi oh um, yeah i'll put him like on top of on top of the tv and in random places yeah. where my fiance will be like where the hell did this come from <laughs> you know what dude every time you go somewhere put it in your pocket and take a picture somewhere and hashtag traveling obi-wan Oh, and just anytime cool. you go somewhere, get gas, go to a taco shop, go somewhere, set it somewhere, take a picture of it in a random spot, and just come home and use the hashtag traveling Obi Wan. Yeah, I'm not gonna and lie. It could become a thing. I'm not gonna lie. Your, your Instagram page really does inspire me to do these type of photos, yeah. man. I really want to. The sets that you make, either you make, you know, wait, you don't make your friend makes, right? Because I remember you so, told me your friend makes. Yeah, he makes those. Yeah, yeah, those yeah. are really, really cool. And if you guys, uh, I, I don't know if he has an Instagram page, but shout yeah. out to him. He collects. Chris P collects. Oh, okay, Chris. The letter P. You guys got yeah, Chris P collects. If you guys are listening to this, you guys definitely got to got to check out his 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 uh, his page because those oh, please those do. are stages are really cool, man. Yeah, he, he does some incredible work. Yeah, and some, I know some awesome work. I I mentioned earlier too at the beginning of the of the episode that you also saw you have eight five eight patches. How did yeah. you, how did you start getting into patches as well? So em embroidery patches, I would. That was one of the little gifts that I would buy myself at uh, Comic Con. You know, it's it's less than ten dollars, so I would go and I'd see a nice little patch, and I would start buying it for my daughter. She got into them and she wanted to put them on a jacket, so I grabbed them. But then when I started doing like uh, uh, collectible shows, toy shows, and stuff like that, um, the stuff that I took was was premium. So a lot of pe people at these shows, excuse me, a lot of people at these shows, this wasn't their market. This, this wasn't their market. They loved it. They looked at it, but they wanted to spend 20 bucks and come home with something smaller. So I was like, all right, as long as I sell one, two or three of these, I'll be all right. But that's the hustle is to find that market because people go to the toy shows and they don't look, they don't think this stuff is going to be there. So I started to put patches out and I talked to a guy up in LA and I, I finagled my way and said, hey, man, if I buy this much, will you give me a deal on them? So he started to. So he let me pick and choose. So I said, I'm going to buy like five of each patch. Like, let me get 10 designs. So 50 patches, you know, um, I would get and I put them out. And they started to sell it. So my, my logic was 
Let me have something at a nice price point. When somebody's walking around a comic convention, you got five bucks, you got 10 bucks, you got 20 bucks still in your pocket. You're walking around, you look down, they see my stuff. Oh my God, that's cool. I love ACDC. I love Pikachu. I love Godzilla. You know, how many, how much are those? I'll give them a deal. Before you know it, I'm collecting 20, 20, 20, you know, from these people. So it was just a different avenue. And all this stuff right here, every booth at all comic conventions have tons of these. So basically you're shopping at every booth and you're just looking at their stuff and saying, who could I buy from the cheapest? So I had to find my angle. And my angle was carry something that nobody else had. Or the people that did have it were really high priced out the market. My, mine were, my price point was great, really great. It worked for you and it worked for me. So both parties were happy at that point. I just needed another avenue for them to stop long enough for them to look up and look at these and go, damn, I want that. Here's my card. Call me when, you, when you're ready to get it. Yeah. So I may not have got them then, but I got them later. So the patches was just an awesome avenue. Before you knew it, uh, people just liked all these patches. I, I made, um, My wife bought me a vest, a jean vest. I ironed on all these patches just to wear at the swap meets. People thought it was so cool. I thought, you know, I, I wore it one time when I was cold. I went inside uh, the store. Everybody commented, dude, that, that vest is so cool. That's so cool. I'm like, uh, I sell them. Follow me on Instagram. You know, so the... The A58 patches was really starting to take off just before COVID and then COVID hit. But I did a few conventions, Long Beach. Hey, you, got a lot of, you got a lot of people even at Connect PV wearing your patches, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, that was really cool. Yeah, that yeah. was really cool. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, it was just, you have to look for that angle. You know, I didn't want to get all, all the stuff that's at the retail markets. I didn't want to have all the Marvel Legends or all the Star Wars figures or all the Funko Pops because every booth already had those. So I wanted to stand out and be a little bit different and come with something that wasn't at every booth. So now when they walk, they're used to seeing all everybody with the same action figures saying, not that that's bad. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying anything against that. I'm just saying once they look down and I invested in these two large glass cases and I put all my patches. So the setup looks nice when I'm there. It's simple. A six foot table and two cases on them, it, it, it just it, it pops. So when they walk by and they see that, hey, wait a minute, I'm getting ready to leave this con, but I like that patch and I still got five dollars in my pocket. I'll take that one. All right, I'll take your five too. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it it it, it works, it, it works both, both ways. ways. Yeah. And it's just patch, the patch community is huge. Patches on Instagram, patches of Instagram, uh, patch collector. Uh, 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 patches just do those look up those hashtags it's a whole different world out there so again collect whatever you want whatever you think you can collect there's probably a community for it definitely you know um uh and that's with that's with pretty much pretty much everything so that's how i get into the patches man and uh I did some of my own designs. I got those designed overseas and, and, and came out with my own. Most of the stuff I just, you buy whatever pop culture is hot out there and you try to stock it. Like uh, Japanese anime is huge. I try to get as much as I can. Guys your age, I sell Pokemon all day long too. I mean, it's just, it's just Pokemon is, is huge when I do the patches. Rock bands, rock bands are huge. Anything, anything rock related is huge, but Anything cartoon and animated, basically anything put on a patch can be sold. I can sell it for sure. I, yeah. No, yeah, it was a really, I remember the patch you gave me, the Charizard. I was like, hey, do you have a Charizard? And I was, you know, oh, man, yeah. I was like, excited to have it. I was like, I said, yeah. I'm going to buy a hoodie and I want to put it on a hoodie. Just put that's this. cool. That's cool. That's cool. That's you what know, I, 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 I got to, I got to come and see you sometime or, or you got to come out. You got to come out sometime and, uh, I got some stuff I'm gonna hook you up with, man. Hell I got yeah, some dude. stuff I'm gonna hook you up with. We're, we're uh, gonna set up that shelf behind you, really, really nice. Hell yeah, dude. Um, yeah. And and you know, before we, my last question. Well, damn, it's sure. we have a. I gotta have you on the show again because it's awesome talking to you, George. Sounds um, good, man. I, I love it. Uh, yeah, get, it. Get your battery ready because I, I talk know, a right? lot. <laughs> because there's a few questions that I didn't even get a chance to to ask. Okay. But um, but before. I'll say my last, probably a good question. My last question would be is uh, before we go, 
what advice do you have for for people who are like you know wanting to get into the toy collecting that what should they avoid like what because you said about the whole toy competing and what they what yeah a little nasty in a way my advice is they are toys they're meant for fun they're meant to take out do not think about resell do not you know they go for a lot yeah toys in the 70s and 80s and maybe early 90s uh, for some part um because everybody opened stuff back then so there's not a lot of that still in the package everything today is made in huge numbers 200,000 pieces and 198,000 of those aren't even going to be opened they're going to save them anything that you think of is, is still held pristine so what my advice is Enjoy for fun. If you're going to get into this hobby, have fun with it. Do not look at investments. If you're going to invest, take some of your money, and go buy mutual funds and go buy some stocks or something. Do, do it the right way. Um, get into it for the sole purpose of, boom, I've watched this guy when I was younger. Now I got him in my hand. It's pretty cool. I want to go put him on my computer, put him on my shelf, and bam. When somebody comes over, did you watch wrestling? Do you remember this guy? He was so cool. Don't buy it and say, now, this guy, I just haven't opened yet. He is going to get open, you know, yeah. so my stuff is going to get open. <laughs> um, uh, it, 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 have fun. Have fun. And if fun is for you keeping them in the package, then have that kind of fun, too. But, you know, my advice is uh, get what you like uh, and only buy what you like. You don't have to have everything, you know. Um, uh, simple as that. Have fun with it. Can't put a price on happiness. No, you're right, man. Uh, um, there's a lot of, because you're right, there, a lot of people will try to see a, an easy way to try to make money, but at the end of the Investment. day, you yeah. got to have there fun. No yeah. Yeah, this yeah. is for fun. Yeah, for sure. Um, George, before we let go, where can people follow you? What events do you, do you have any toy events? Because I know you also do toy displays. We didn't even get to that, which I wanted to ask, but do you have any toy events or, or any, because uh, I know you're really big into those stuff. Well, if you follow Diecast and Donuts, it's with the letter N, Diecast and Donuts uh, on Instagram or on Facebook, they host a monthly show uh, up in Miramar by the Pyramid or, you know, uh, off of uh, Miramar Road. Yeah. Um, it's it's a fun setup. Um, right now, it's an outdoor setup. You know, you have to wear masks, uh, but people sell stuff. So that's for Diecast. So if you follow their page, they're, they can be on there. Okay. On the web, you can find us on the Collector Showroom. Uh, the Collector Showroom is a local page. Um, there's several other uh, action figure toy pages out there. My buddy, uh, Michael uh, uh, Benavides, runs a, a, a Thug Page Toy Hobby United Group. Uh, another one of my buddies runs San Diego Toy Collectors, uh, San Diego or United Toy Collectors of San Diego. But um, the two pages that I'm on is the Collector Showroom. That's run by Eduardo and Benjamin. And then there's BFW Toy Show, San Diego BFW Toy Show. Follow that. That's my page. Uh, or, uh, you know, basically I put all the content, whatever on there. So that's a good one that you can follow me on Instagram. One Shots World underscore GD. That's for George Dixon. No, oh, One Shots World underscore GD. And then there's BFW underscore Toy Show. So follow BFW underscore Toy Show. And, uh, you know, hey, man, I just want to say, Alex, man, it's, it's, it's great talking to you, brother. Uh, I miss you. You know, yeah. man, we, 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 we had some fun. We had a good time. I have a feeling you're going to get called back. I don't know if by this point you'll be off and doing something else. But in the event that our paths cross again at work is going to be cool. But if not, I feel that I've met somebody that I'm going to stay friends with. Oh, yeah. Uh, regardless Definitely. of us not working together. And uh, um, uh, no, I'm, I'm glad I'm, that you had me on today. And this hey, is fun. I mean, I miss the crew for sure, man. I'm just waiting for that. Call yeah, yeah, TV. for I mean, sure. They they always ask about you. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, and uh, it's it's cool right now. We're we're you know we're hustling, we're still hustling. You know what I mean? I'm still doing my yeah. my janitorial yeah. service yeah. stuff like that. And you know, I I miss you guys, Manny, and all them. Yeah. Um, and for sure, you know, this now I've definitely, dude, knowing you, George, like for people who who, who don't know George very uh, well yet or anything. Everybody at work knows him as dad <laughs> for a reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> except for <laughs> except for Manny's um, wife, probably she, she knows you as Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> uh, inside joke that because uh, George just now, like how I said earlier, he gave me the salt and pepper shaker, 
he's he's that type of guy. He's like, hey, yeah. man, here, dude. He gave, he gave me a patch, Charizard patch. Like, you know, yeah. he's 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 a really nice guy, approachable dude. And um, uh, you know, if he, he got his Instagram, if you guys are interested in, in any type of topic, toy topic, doesn't he have to be a certain type? I'm pretty sure he has knowledge of all type of topics on toys. Um, hit him up. Get some questions. Uh, if you want to get into toy shows, know about collecting more, go to these pages. There's a huge community base, and you can hear here. Um, it's not just about toy competing. It's about having fun. It's about this escape. Having fun. That's it, man. Plain and simple. Have yeah, fun. That, that's therapeutic. Um, thank, thank you so much, George. Reed. And, and you know, you're always welcome. We gotta have you. I gotta have you again, man, because there's definitely a lot. Of I'll do it again. In. Didn't I, I I'll do it again ass. for sure. And uh, it, it's anytime, it's, brother. Anytime. Uh, for sure, dude. Um, thank you guys hey, all man. for listening. Uh, catch you guys on the next episode of the West Coast. And thank you, George, for coming. <laughs>